Hey everybody, it's Miss Helsher. We're gonna be doing some fun clay projects today. Um, today is called a pinch pot. It's for our kindergartners only. Kindergartners are gonna be doing and learning how to do uh, pinch pots. Uh, they are basically, um, we're gonna show you how to make a bowl with your clay with using what's called the pinch technique. So a couple different things with clay. I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about clay before we get started. Um, you can use lots of different things for this project. You can use Play-Doh. You can use um, what's called salt dough, which is what I have in my hand. It's not something you buy at the store. It's actually something you make with water, salt, and flour, and it makes this fun doughish project. Um, you can do a lot of different things with clay. It's super cool. Um, at school, what we would normally do is I have a gray clay for you, and that clay we would we would normally make our project out of, and then we'd put it in this big thing called a kiln, not kill, it's kiln with an N at the end. And what we do with that, that is basically like a big old oven. It's just a fancy kind of oven because we put clay in it. And what we do with that oven is we'll put our clay projects inside and then we do what's called a firing. That means we make the oven get all hot and we basically bake our projects and it'll make the clay turn a different color and it'll make it easier for us to um, paint on the top of our projects. So those are some fun, really cool things that we can do with a normal clay. But since you're working at home, everybody's gonna be working with a different kind of clay. Some of you are gonna be using clay like I have, like salt dough, which is, um, you'll be doing the, basically the same pro process. When you're done making your project, you'll put it in the oven and then it'll bake itself into a, into a hard material that you can actually use, which is super fun and you can paint it. Um, when you're using just Play-Doh, it works really well for learning how to do the pinch pot and do the project, but Play-Doh, you, um, you can't bake it in an oven. Play-Doh actually will just crack and get hard and fall apart eventually, so you can't keep your project if you're using Play-Doh. Does that make sense? If you don't wanna keep it, you can definitely use Play-Doh. Um, so all the materials I have are already listed on our Google Classroom, but just a reminder, things that you're gonna need is your clay, for sure. You wanna get out a pencil, or you could also use the tip of a paintbrush since we're poking into our clay with the pencil. We're not doing any drawing. Um, you also want some yarn. I have different colored yarn that I'm going to use. I have a bunch of different kinds. Um, you can use whatever color you want. If you only have one type, that's fine. It doesn't matter to me. Whatever your art project you want to use. Um, the other thing you're going to need are if you want to add beads to your project, like um, for like a friendship bracelet type beads, you could put those in your, um, actually put them with your clay. It looks really cool. Um, the other thing you're going to need is some things for texture. So think about that word texture. Texture is how things feel. So if I'm feeling my clay, it feels really um, soft, but it also feels really like salty because I have so much salt in it. If I feel something um, squishy like a slime, that's a texture, that's squish. If I feel something like yarn like this, it feels very soft, that's its texture. So um, I want you to think of some items that would be some cool textures. And the first thing I want you to do with your project is just practice those textures. Some ways to do it that I really love that I did um, that I did in school before is taking your clay and going and seeing what it looks like when you press it to different surfaces. Now, it worked best for me when I went outside. I pressed it to like leaves. I took leaves and I pushed it into my clay. I pushed my clay in onto a tree and pulled it off and saw what it looked like. It looks super cool. I would really recommend you guys going outside and trying that out. Um, some other textures that I have is, um, that you really want to make sure you can use. Um, obviously, a pencil makes a really cool texture. You can make sort of poke marks. Let me get this a little closer for you so you can see. You could use it on its side and make sort of like a scaly texture. You can draw in the clay by using the side of the pencil. You could even just do the front of the pencil that's sharpened and make sort of these really cool little triangular shapes. That feeling is what texture is. I even grabbed some like edges of markers that when I push it down, that one makes almost like a sun pattern. If you have a Play-Doh kit, you'll have a ton of different ways to make texture. I'm gonna roll this top. You can use them in different ways too. Look at that really cool bumpy texture. That. It's really awesome. I'm gonna pull it up so you can see. So play with some texture. See what you can find. Um, 
Things that you have around the house, like kitchen utensils work really well too. Forks, you can make a lot of really fun things. Um, if you push them down, you can make really cool triangles or you can make sort of a scratch mark. There's a lot of really fun things you can do um, with Play-Doh and with clay for textures. Um, I've even grabbed things like if you wanna do like a milk jug cap, It'll make a perfect circle for you. We're gonna be adding texture to our project afterwards. I just wanted you to practice before you got started with um, different things that you can use to make textures. Just find different random things around your house. And what can you use to make texture or a pattern? Remember pattern, that word that we learned? Think about what that means. I know you know, okay? So some really cool things. Um, this is just a mug, a fun mug that I made. It's a leaf mug. Um, that I actually made with clay and then I painted it. This is made out of real clay. It's very thick, very heavy. Um, and it was one of the first mugs that I learned how to make whenever I started. So just to show you what a finished project can look like. It's super fun. Um, there's different ways to do everything. So first thing I want you to do for your real project, check this out. Make sure that you are gonna stay clean and not messy. I'm wearing my apron, making sure we're all good. Uh, you wanna take your piece and I want you to pull it and squish it into a ball. Okay, to do that, I'm just squishing it in my hands, pushing it down together. I cup one hand, which means to not make it flat, but make it a little bit curved. Set your clay inside with your other hand, make that same cup shape and put it on top. And I'm gonna pick it up and move it. Do that same cup shape. And just roll it in my hand, make with that cup shape. I'm just squeezing with both hands. And then if you really wanna make it, you put your hands in again that cup shape and roll that around. You wanna get as close to a circle or a ball as you can. Okay. I think that looks pretty good. That looks like a really good, really good shape. So the next thing to do to make what's called a pinch pot is to take your thumb and stick it in the middle just like you're making a donut. Now don't push it all the way down. You still wanna have clay on the bottom. It's like a donut, but the other, it doesn't go all the way through. See, nothing on the back. Once you got that donut-like shape, you're gonna put one finger on the inside and one finger on the outside and pinch. You wanna sort of take this hand and rotate it all the way around. You can switch it to be your thumb in the middle, doesn't matter. And pinch and turn and pinch and turn all the way around, okay? Now don't get it too thin, which means too skinny, and don't get it too thick, which means wide. If you look at my piece right now, see how this space looks like there's a lot of clay right there and this space looks like there's not. You want it to be about as thick as a cookie, like a cookie thickness. And you want it to be the same thickness all the way around. So you don't want it to be this skinny. You don't want it to be this wide. You want it to be right in the middle. So I'm gonna add a little bit more clay to where I have that skinny part by squeezing it. Okay, and I'm just gonna keep pinching all the way around. What I found is the easiest for me. If I sort of rotate this with one finger, two fingers in the middle, and my other finger on the outside, and I close my eyes, I can sort of feel where the lumps are and where the flat parts are. So I'm just sort of tapping and squeezing really lightly as I go all the way around. Now, Yours probably will take a little bit more time to get it perfect. If you're starting to see areas that are a little bit cracked like this and you're using the same type of clay as me, you can take some water and put it in that crack. In real clay, the gray clay that we use, it'll seal itself up. So it's a really good way to practice if you're using this salt dough by adding that water. Okay. Now I'm gonna start taking my fingers and going, instead of on the edge here, I'm gonna go a little bit lower. Remember, you still wanna have a good flat bottom there. If you wanna set it on the table and pinch around, 
You can do that too so that it stays up. Whatever's easiest for you. Like I said on our Google Classroom, I used about half of that salt dough recipe. So I did half a cup salt, half a cup of um, flour, and then a quarter cup of water. So I'm pinching all the way around. And then I'm gonna check the bottom. So I wanna make sure my bottom is also cookie thickness. So I'm gonna pinch and go, and eh, it's a little thick. So maybe I need to pinch that out a little bit too. I wonder if you guys checked out our artist for this week yet. Our artist name is Jackie Stevens. She is really amazing. She is a Winnebago Indian from Nebraska. She's a really wonderful potter. She was not um, even really into art too much uh, before she went to college. And then she found this really wonderful art class that she liked. And she went to a different college, which was called the uh, Institute of American Indian Art. And she learned about pottery from a famous potter. And she just has these really beautiful pieces of artwork. Um, if you look at Google Classroom, there's a bunch of pictures of them. Her main thing that she really loves to do is show that each piece of art has its own, um, its own like soul is kind of what they, what the uh, Winnebago Indians put into their artwork. So she says, here's a quote from her. She says, each pot has its own life, personality, character, and form. And that is what set me free. Pottery is like people. Everyone is different and it's never perfect. I really loved that quote from her. I think that it was really cool because my pottery is not going to look the same as yours, right? Yours is not going to look exactly like mine because you have different hands. You do your work differently. And same with hers. Every piece is going to be different. She does these really cool weavings on the top, which I'm going to show you how to do as well. So this is about what your piece should look like before it goes in the oven. Make sure it looks the exact same distance all the way around. Like I see this is a little bit thicker. I'm going to squeeze that out. You want to make sure it looks exactly how you want it to be. This is how about how it should look before it goes in the oven, except for we want to add our holes now to be able to weave on top of it like Jackie Stevens does. So I'm going to take my pencil and I'm actually going to do, use the back side. I don't have any eraser anymore. I haven't uh, I've used that too much. So I'm actually going to just take this and poke it through really lightly by twisting it. My thumb's on the inside to catch it so that I can feel it going through. Okay. I feel it with my thumb. That means I can push. And there's my hole. And then on the inside, you get a little bit of a clay piece that you can just put to the side or you can put back in your, your pottery. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to take, again, my thumbs on the inside. I'm pushing with this hand. And you can put this next one wherever you want. It could be high. It could be low. I'm going to put mine straight across. Okay. You want to make these all around the top so that when we do our stitching later, that you can make yours look really cool. Okay. So again, I'm just pushing. See how I did that on the inside? Really cool. You want to make sure you don't push too hard or that you do this too early because then your clay isn't gonna to stick together. So I'm just putting my finger on the inside and the, I'm gonna wiggle, roll my pencil in my hand while I'm pushing it forward. And then I can push, take out that clay. Super fun. Don't get too close to the top, otherwise it's gonna break through your, your top here instead of the side. Um, another fun thing that uh, I learned about Jackie Stevens when I did my research is that she um, she first had an interest in pottery when she was little because she had a river by her house. She had a river or a creek. And I don't know if you knew this, but you can actually get clay from a river or a creek. There's a process you have to go through to make it really work for what you're doing. But... I learned that in one of my ceramics classes 
where we actually went to the creek, we got some clay. If you go to a clay and, uh, sorry, if you go to a river, you dig up basically dirt that looks almost more reddish and it's thicker, it'll look like clay. And then there's a process you go through where you sift all the sand out and then you'll only have clay left. It's a really cool thing to do. Um, and you can make it just like regular pottery and fire it. It's really fun. So that's where she first learned of pottery by just going outside. Okay, so I have a really wonderful piece right now. What you can do next is add some of those textures. So what I'm gonna add is maybe some big old circles. So you have to be really careful when you're adding your texture not to squeeze out the edge too much. Cool. Just gonna push really lightly. You could do that all the way around. You can make yours however you like. You could even, like I said, draw in it. Maybe make some marks up top. As soon as yours is decorated the way you like it, that's whenever you want to put it in your oven. Once it gets hard, that's whenever we can start on the, on the string. Now, I don't want you guys to wait the whole two hours with me while it goes in the oven. So what I'm going to have us do is I'm going to show you how to weave while it's still wet. But like I said, I want you to put it through the oven first. So pause the video now, put your stuff in the oven, and come back and weave with me. Okay, so this is called a whip stitch. So you want to get some pretty colors out, whatever you want, and cut that to the length you want it and add it to your piece. Where, like I said, it's called a whip stitch. And a whip stitch is whenever you basically go around. It's kind of like um, a notebook. If you've ever looked at the way the outside of a notebook is, it sort of curls around like a slinky. It goes in the paper, out the paper, in the paper, out the paper. That's the same thing we're gonna do here. So I'm going to take my string, you don't need too long, and I'm going to thread it. Thread means to put it through one of my holes. And then on the inside, I'm going to pull it out. If you have a sewing needle, it might be a little bit helpful for you. Because, like I said, this is really hard to do when it's wet and the yarn won't survive through your oven. So... Then what you're gonna do, once it's on the inside, you're gonna pull it out, okay? And then you're gonna put it into the next hole from the outside. Don't stick it in from the inside, otherwise that's not a whip stitch. So I'm gonna put it in through this hole. It's really hard to do when it's wet. And pull it out. Then, like I said, put it back on the outside. and stick it in the hole. If you wanted to put on beads, now would be the time. So whenever you pull it out, then you'd string a bead on it and the bead would sit up top here. I'm gonna just pull it lightly and then around again and through. Mine's getting really clay and doughy on the string. It's making it not look the best, but that's just because mine's wet. And like I said, yours should go through the oven before you do this part, or at least if you have the air dry clay, letting it sit and letting it dry. Model Magic works really well for this kind of project too. You just don't get as good of a process with that. Okay, go out and around. I'm pulling it through that bottom part. All right, and I'm out of string on this side, so I can try this one again. Nope, I might need some more. If you don't cut enough string, you can switch to a different color, or you can tie your new string to the end, and then go around. So once you've gone all the way around, I haven't just because I ran out of string, but um, then you're going to be all good with your project. So once you're finished with this, you can like look at what Jackie Stevens does. She does some really beautiful pottery pieces, but like I said, that's a whip stitch whenever you go out and around, out and around. It's like a, a wave almost picture. You're going over and through, over and through each time, and it should show a really cool pottery piece, okay? 
Alrighty, guys, I hope you had fun with this. I know I did. We're going to be doing some super fun stuff in the next couple weeks, so hang tight there. I know I'm a little bit sad that we didn't get a chance to we didn't get a chance to finish out our school year and do some real clay projects and some real fun stuff, but it is going to be a fun, uh, it's going to be a fun next few weeks because we will have some time to do some things that we won't have an opportunity to do um, in school. Okay. So I hope you have a good time the next couple of weeks and follow along with what I'm, with what I'm doing. If you have any questions, feel free to email me um, and let me know if I can do anything to help. All right, guys, you have a wonderful week. I'll see you soon. Okay. Bye-bye.